I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and the Crypto Coin Show. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Chad Liu, the co founder of Tidal Finance. Chad, welcome to the show and thanks for taking the time to be here. Hello, everyone. Hey, this is Chad. Hey, uh, Ash, thanks for inviting me. Glad to be here. You're very welcome. I'm really excited to dive into Tidal Finance and let's just kick it off with an overview and the focuses of Tidal Finance and what are the problems that your team is solving for? Well, we are an uh, insurance cover platform. So uh, the insurance space, what we're covering is smart contract hacks and attacks. Uh, so look at the current market, right? There's like over 40 billion uh, crypto assets in the DeFi uh, protocols. And if you look at last year, there were almost like over $100 million got hacked and attacked. So uh, in that case, you know, those are the, the coverage you want to provide. Mm -hmm. uh, and we truly believe, you know, this will be like one of one of the, uh, the you know, that's a strong pillar in the whole DeFi space uh, uh, to for the insurance cover service to catch up to attract more capital coming into the whole DeFi space. Definitely. And I think it's a well-needed product, Chad. And there's definitely a lot of capital being injected, especially in the DeFi space right now. And there is room for more insurance protocols. And I know that there are a few. Um, and combining DeFi and insurance is an important aspect. Do you have something that makes Tidal Finance unique at, or has competitive advantage from other DeFi and insurance platforms right now? Yeah, sure. Um, well, there are a couple, um, you know, cover protocols on the market like Nessus Mutual, you know, they've been launched like a, for uh, over a couple of years now and cover protocols are fairly new. Um, and each product have their own like unique uh, uh, differentiator. And Tidal, uh, we're positioning ourselves of increasing the capital efficiency. Uh, by what I mean, like I like to give an example, uh, you know, if you want to sell insurance, if a $1 capital, right, you may want to sell to, you know, 20 people, 50 people. And so you can collect revenue streams from this 20 people, 50 people who pay your insurance premium. Uh, but at the same time, you want to kind of control your risk kind of low. If there's more people claim, keep claiming your uh, assets, you may go bankrupt. Uh, so Tidal's design is to build a framework, easy for insurance seller, easy to sell, you know, your covers to multiple protocols. You know, mm -hmm. for example, you can use $1, sell up to you know 20 protocols uh, uh cover uh in a fairly low uh risk pool mm -hmm. um but on the on the on the other side how do we mitigate uh the the, the insolvency risk what if the multiple protocols start you know getting attacked and hacked at the same time it's we're building the insurance marketplace on a weekly basis mm -hmm. so shorten this lens of insurance cover each period we're like mitigating that risk so that's the main uh, design uh, function, like how we differentiate from from the other uh, protocols. Mm -hmm. And the key is really to increase the insurance reserve capital efficiency for someone who's willing to take a little bit more risk, uh, you know, to make more returns uh, from the insurance premium. So definitely. And speaking of bigger bigger returns, I was reading into Tidal Finance and that you're really focused on high yield DeFi returns, which are higher reward, but also higher risk. And also you're leveraging the power of over leveraged covers in decentralized finance. So it seems like this right. is a little bit higher risk area than regular finance. Uh, can you talk about how those products work? All right. So initially we're going to launch uh, three uh, risk pools. Um, so basically like low risk pool, medium risk pool and high risk pool. And each pool will include probably around 20 protocols at the launch. So for example, if you come to the platform, you have to sell insurance and you deposit, provide liquidity into one of the three risk pools and you can select up to, you know, 10 protocols, up to 20 protocols to back up your uh, capital at, uh, at once. So of course there's a risk associated with it, right? But regardless of the risk, uh, take the risk out, the return we are designing, aiming to give the liquidity provider up to, you know, around 80% to 100% return. Um, so, you know, that's that's where, you know, the uh, little bit risk takers, they may want to come to back up more protocols mm -hmm. to sell covers. Um, and on top of that, uh, of course, when we are launched, we will uh, design some liquidity mining, staking, uh, incentive programs to uh, to you know increase uh, the return to the next level. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, that's I think that's where the main difference. Like when you compare 
uh, an insurance product compared to you know other uh, DeFi protocols like lending um, or DAX or asset management like Wyvern. Um, the here is you have higher return, but yeah, of course you are bearing like certain percent of risk. Definitely. It's great to know that you're opening three different pools with different levels of risk as well. And with those liquidity pools, right now the majority of DeFi applications are running on Ethereum, um, but there are a lot of other blockchain protocols that are up and coming, which are moving uh, into the DeFi space as well. You know, Polkadot, Cardano, Cosmos, many others. Uh, are your liquidity pools uh, in the decentralized way going to be focused on Ethereum or are you really just more blockchain agnostic moving forward to be covering insurance for all of these protocols? Yeah, so uh, for our part, protocol use case, uh, right now we are launching the test net on Ethereum and we are looking for uh, probably main net with a layer two solution on Ethereum. Um, and then later on we'll move, migrate to Polkadot ecosystem. Uh, but the key behind all this, I think all the protocols are looking for is a uh, scalability issue. Mm -hmm. like right now, the gas fee is super high in Ethereum. Um, that's why, like, you know, we are exploring, um, you know, layer two solutions uh, like Polygon. And uh, uh, also, you know, down the road, we're going to a uh, uh, Polkadot ecosystem. Uh, and I think another um, thing like protocols are looking for is the liquidity in the ecosystem, right? Mm -hmm. So. Right now, Ethereum definitely had the most liquidity in their ecosystem, uh, and that's just benefit for you know DeFi protocols to be in that ecosystem. But down the road, right, for example, the parrot chains in the Polkadot ecosystem, um, if the chains can communicate between each other in a you know in a, uh, a frictionless manner and connect to other chains, you know that would definitely become like a more uh, popular hub for for mm -hmm. the protocols to be in. So, but that probably unfolds during the Q2, Q3. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll see uh, how the parallel chains will talk to each other. And um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's uh, a brief bro from the scalability and uh, you know, in probably uh, uh, the two points um, uh, unfolding in the blockchain space. And I actually heard like a really uh, good example I just thought about why I talk about that team. If you compare Polkadot with Ethereum, uh, Ethereum is like one big house, like everyone's in there and, but you know, it's very easy to talk to each other, but everyone's sharing the same resource. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you look at Polkadot is more like, you know, it's like a big condominium and each parachain is its own house. It's, you can operate your own things like more efficiently, mm -hmm. but when you talk to a little bit longer time. So we'll see like how, uh, how uh, they kind of address that challenge. So. Definitely. And I like that analogy. And there's definitely ups and downs to both, but you can see where the network effect is right now. And the first steps for your team are to get that working on Ethereum and then migrate you know, uh, to Polkadot. So that's great. And now as you are building these liquidity pools starting out um, uh, you know, upon launch, do you have incentivization or how are you going to help grow the adoption of the platform in, in the early stages for the actual uh, users and growth? So for sure, we're going to have a liquid in mining, the same as all the other, you know, DeFi protocols uh, to bootstrap liquidity. Um, another approach we are adopting, working pretty efficiently so far, is to partner with other protocol teams. So for other protocol to be on um, in our insurance pool, be able to for our you know people to participate, sell covers, buy covers from. Um, we have a backing process with the protocol and uh, because I believe like it's, it's one of the key elements to bring, bring protocol team themselves into this ecosystem, not to have the protocol insured. And if something happens, they should be also involved, like where's the problem, how to make sure the payout process handled properly to pay out to the insurance, uh, uh, uh to be the, uh, to the, uh, victim, uh, victim users, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and we actually have a design module to work with them, taking their team native tokens, like backing up their own protocol. So if something really happens, certain compensation of their native team token, kind of like their own insurance strategy fund will be compensated uh, for the payout. 
Uh, but the more upside is, you know, to really get themselves involved as well, and also gives confidence to the title LP liquidity providers that, hey, you know, your team has confidence, and you know, uh, the users, other users may have confidence to help you sell your insurance cover as well. So. Definitely. And it'll be key in growing that liquidity pool and the liquidity mining early on. And I'm, I'm guessing that's going to have a deep connection to the title finance token, which I want to talk about next. And, yeah. you know, I'm, that, I'm sure the title finance token is involved in, in that. But can you just give a full scope of, you know, the ecosystem and how title finance token works within the whole protocol? Yeah, sure. Um, it has an economic value as well as uh, uh, the governance uh, function. So, you know, the Tidal platform, our business model is to charge a small transaction fee whenever it's cover is sold. Uh, so I believe that's a pretty big market, right? So if, even if we cover up to $1 billion assets, uh, right now there's 40 billion assets on the market, uh, only less than half billion about covered. Um, so that will generate like certain uh, uh, decent revenue stream uh, profits for the platform. Um, and that directly benefits from the economic value with the title token holders. Um, regarding to governance is also pretty important. Um, so governance, there's a few key ones I can think of. One is uh, the payout process, uh, right? Whenever there's a claim, uh, there's a token holders will vote uh, quickly to see if the valid or unvalid claim. Um, and also, you know, what's the risk level of different pool? Um, and uh, what's if there's a new proposal for a new different type of risk pool want to be created, uh, they can propose that as well. Um, and most important, there's also like insurance premium pricing, right? Because right now at the launch, we have certain formulas to guide how much insurance should cost based on the risk. So all those parameters uh, later on could be, uh, will be uh, uh, controlled by token holders through the DAO structure. Um, it's just like, you know, the, uh, if you look at a normal world, it's like, um, health insurance, right? Like right now we have this coronavirus and that may impact like certain things will change on the health insurance. They will sell a price like different, uh, uh, health insurance policies. So these things will be, um, uh, uh, controlled by DAO on title mm -hmm. finance and yeah, under the structure. So. Very cool. And thank you for that, Chad. Now, I know you're close to the launch, but you've already done a lot of work with the amount of partners that you're growing and just with the investors. Can you just touch on you know, some of your key partners and investors uh, upon the launch? Sure. Um, yeah, we are backed by uh, tier one investors like um, KR1, uh, Spaten Group, um, um, uh, Hypersphere, uh, among with uh, you know, probably 10, uh, 10 other investors. Uh, so in the public, in the private sale, we had uh, completed and had a pretty good uh, fundraise. Uh, on the partnership side, um, there's a few well-known ones um, uh, re, uh, in the staked out. I think they launched a few a couple months ago. Uh, BZX, um, that's a protocol team actively looking for insurance cover solutions. Um, and uh, yeah, there's a few other big ones that we're, we're in, uh, in contact with. So we are doing the test net from now to about five weeks from now. Mm -hmm. uh, we're shooting for the main net. So during this mm -hmm. phase, we're definitely reaching out a lot more to uh, different uh, protocol teams, uh, especially the ones like three or to six months being on the market, uh, have like locked the value in their protocol will be the good use case to be on the title platform. So we'll make more announcements uh, pretty soon. Definitely, and thank you for that. And I was going to ask you about that, but you touched on it there. You're heading towards the main net uh, in approximately five weeks, give or take. There's always uh, bumps in the road, but can you just give a, a bigger picture in terms of where you're at right now with the product launching and what you expect you know, by the end of this quarter and, and into the summer of 2021 in terms of major product release? Sure. Um, so launch and test net, like you said, uh, well, like you said, there's always bump on the road. So we're supposed to launch a few days back uh, last week, but we got to postpone a little bit for to fixing a few more bugs. Um, and but right now the plan is like five weeks from now, uh, we'll be ready for the main net. 
Um, and uh, I guess after launch, our top priority is to grow more ecosystem partners um, to include more protocols on the platform. Um, so by Q2, if um, we could include around 50 different protocols on the platform, um, for that'll be a, a pretty good uh, a, a big milestone. And for the total cover sold, right? So that's where like the insurance cover protocol generates the value in the DeFi space. If I can get to you know five hundred million dollars cover sold on the pro a protocol in Q two, uh, you know I'll be I'll be pretty happy. <laughs> <laughs> and in terms of how we migrate to Polkadot ecosystem, also around Q two, I think uh, the fair estimate will be by the end of Q two mm -hmm. uh, uh, that um, migration may happen. So. That's great. And those are great milestones, Chad, and all the best moving towards $500 million coverage. That will be that would be great. Um, and now we're running out of time. But for the viewers that are looking to follow along with the product launch, the, get involved in the community early on with Title. what's the best way for them to get involved? Um, well, uh, our website, pretty simple, Title.finance. Um, so a lot of product information will be released on their announcements. And the rest, I think, just join our Telegram group. You know, it's also mm -hmm. um, on the on the website, the link. So yeah, Telegram group, I'd say like the most uh, active uh, news channel that we, uh, we distribution news, so. Great, well, I will leave both of those links as well in the description box below for the viewers. Thank you so much for taking the time, Chad. All the best with the launch and the main net and everything moving forward with Title Finance. And let's follow up in the near future. All right, thank you very much, Ashton. Thank you for inviting me here.